Recording in progress. Got that going. All right. Good Sunday morning. It is April 17th, 2022. Today we're going to jump right into it. How you doing? First of all, before we start. Cool. How y'all doing? And how y'all doing? All right. Here we go. We got a good one today. We got a real, 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 real good one. Today we are talking about light sleep sciences. Hold on, let me get one more person in. Good. All right. Uh, light sleep sciences that enhances your physical and spiritual superpower. Eradicating insomnia. Light sleep sciences that enhance your physical and spiritual superpowers, eradicating insomnia. Begin. Today is April 17th, 2022. Today's show intentions, today's show's intention is to upgrade dream life control levels. So to upgrade your dream life control levels, which may influence people to sleep more. Dream life sleeping could equal a dream life living. Here we go. Be still, but still move and move forward best. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, according to Louis Farrakhan, the most, uh, minister uh, Louis Farrakhan, he said that when it gets dark, brother, the righteous don't move in darkness. He said you wait for the flash of lightning and it will light up things in an instant. Then make a few steps and then stop. And when the light comes on again, you make a few steps. Minister Louis Farrakhan also said we live in a time of great, great confusion. And in this time of confusion, we just can't move confused. End quote. So I said, we have to stand. So we stand it. Then we have to stand still. Then we have to study. And then we have to ask for higher guidance constantly. Higher, higher guidance constantly, which sets our intentions to actually attract the answers to guidance, to the guidance that we're seeking. Then move, then move. When you receive that cosmic download, or like the cartoons, the light bulb. So, this lecture should put some people to sleep, not out of boredom, but out of wanting to be superheroes. Because sleep is your superpower. Better sleeps create better control. Better sleep creates better control. Let's take emotions. It's sometimes it's sometime referred to as the spirit or the breath of life. It's it, it prescribes our actions and shapes our worlds, emotions. The one who can master the emotions can master actions. And the one who can master actions is the master of all future realities. So here's the question. Can insomnia be mastered or no? Can insomnia be mastered or no? Let's analyze two choices. We're only going to break it down to two choices. Choice path one is, is a healthy sleep life with lucid dreaming abilities attached or choice path number two, insomnia. Let's just say due to sheer sanity, let's pick choice path number one. Since so many of us has, ha, have already chosen uh, insomnia before, let's, let's just pick uh, choice path number one. So choice path number one is a healthy sleep life with, Drew's, with, with uh, lucid dreaming abilities or we'll say options attached. So again, I don't want a lucid dream, I just need sleep. 
cool for you. Oh, okay, that's cool. If I'm sleeping already, I would like the lucid dream so I could actually do more in my sleep. Cool, I'm actually interested in that too. First, you must decrease your bed energies. First, you must decrease your bed energies. Here we go. Only use your bed for sleeping. So you won't create additional energies on your bed. That's why hotel rooms beds can be so difficult <laughs> for some of us to fall asleep in. And I'm going to say this again. That's why so many hotel bedrooms can be so difficult to fall asleep in. Because so many people's energies have been and it still, it, it still are on that bed. Don't believe me. Jason, you being spooky like a mug. Okay. Question number one out of two questions. Would you lay or sit on the bed of someone who was murdered on that bed? No, because that energy is on it. Question number two. Would you lay on or sit on a bed that your so-called idol slept or sat on? Yes, because that energy is on it. So, back to reality. After decreasing actual bed energy, you must now change the mind that will be sleeping on that bed and before bedtime. Here we go. Sleeping after learning allows you to hit the save button on the new memories so you don't forget. But scientists are also learning that we need adequate sleep before learning. Scientists are also learning, this is dub, but okay. Scientists are also learning that we need adequate sleep before learning. It's like drying out our learning sponges. Watch this. To soak up new information. Without sleep, the memory circuits of the brain essentially become waterlogged. And you can't absorb new information. So I don't know if any of y'all did anything outside, but in I've seen a I've seen a, a soak log. You can't get any more water into it. So, without sleep, the memory circuits of the brain essentially become waterlogged, and you can't absorb new information. So, let's look at the definition of sleep because I'm really into definitions. So, the definition of sleep is a condition of the body and mind that typically recurs for several hours every night, in which the nervous system is relatively inactive. The eyes close, the postural muscles relax, and consciousness practically suspended. Since this lecture was created for uh, those who experience insomnia, here are some best insomnia treatments. And I don't think I don't want y'all think I got it. I gotta uh, actually train for this. I can go to bed after drinking a lot of coffee. So this is for all my homies out here. Here we go. Never go into your bed unless you are sleeping in it. No Netflix in the bed, no dinner in the bed, just sleep. Here we go, we gonna go deep. Get a deep sleep for eight hours every day. Jason, I can't do eight hours? Hold on, let's go with the athlete. Man, I can't go eight hours, man, I'm trying to be like Kobe. Okay, in a real study that we can research together, Men who slept only four or five hours had significantly smaller testicles, um, and their testosterone le their testosterone levels was ten years their age. Jason, that's inappropriate. Yeah, whatever. I do player development, so I use this for my male athletes that want to stay up and party all night with uh, that so-called big testicle energy. I shut that down. So, back to prof professionalism. <laughs> sleep is the save button for learning and it's also needed before learning regularity in sleep it just means wake up at the same time every day it's time to train the mind body and soul so make sure to even do this on the weekends alright so again whatever schedule you want to come up with Wake up at that time every day, even on the weekend. Keep it cool. Cool meaning keep the room cool for better sleep. If you toss and turn in bed, 
then go to a different room and do a different activity and come back when you feel sleepy again. This will make associations in the brain between sleepy and the bedroom. Sleepy in the bedroom. Sleepy in the bedroom. Now here goes some bars from this guy named Matt Walker. So shout out to Matt Walker. We got some Matt Walker bars out here. Here goes some Matt Walker bars. He said you would never sit at the dinner table waiting to be hungry. So why would you lie in bed waiting to get sleepy? And I said, Matt Walker. Those are bars. That was the bars, right? <laughs> okay. So again, you would never sit at the dinner table waiting to be hungry. So why would you lie in bed waiting to get sleepy? Now let's just say you did fall asleep. Let's talk about the fun stuff. You fell asleep. Because again, if you start doing this, we probably won't have a hard time um, going to sleep. Here is where the real living is. Let's talk about lucid dreaming. A lucid dream is a type of dream in which the dreamer becomes aware that they are actually dreaming. During a lucid dream, the dreamer may gain an amount of control. Here we go, y'all. Y'all heard that word? During the lucid dream, the dreamer may gain um, uh, some amount of control over the dream. Watch this. Characters, the narrative, or the environment. If you don't, guess what? That's like you're in the ocean with no oars. You're just in a boat like this, wherever the ocean takes me. Man, I had a dream that this was happening to me. During a lucid dream, the dreamer may gain a some amount. I didn't say all amount, but some, some amount of control over the dream characters, the narrative, or environment. However, this is not necessarily uh, for a dream to be described as lucid. So lucid dreaming has been studied and reported for many years. Prominent figures from ancient to modern times have been fascinated by lucid dreams and have sought many ways to better understand their causes and purposes. Now, many different theories have emerged as a result of scientific research on this subject and have been shown in pop culture. So shout out the genius of Wu-Tang Clan just because. So now, future developments in psychological research have pointed in ways which this form of dreaming may, this form of dreaming may utilize as a form of sleep therapy. Now listen how deep this is. Before we go into it, Let's look at the etymology, because some people might be like, they already shut it down. Because some people might be like, uh, in ancient times, I got bars for all of that. But the etymology that I went with is the term lucid dreaming was coined by Dutch author and psychiatrist, psychiatrist Frederick von Eden in his 1913 article, A Study of Dreams. Here we go. Though descriptions of dreamers being aware that they are dreaming predate this article. So again, this is not the end all be all, but I like what he did with his stuff. What I respect is Van Eden studied his own dreams between January 20th of 1898 and December 26th of 1912. I'm going to stop it right there. You know, back then in ancient Africa, we had, uh, and I had read in this book, and um, I, I would debate anybody. What I respect is Van Eaton studied his own dreams between January 20th, 1898, and December 26th, 1912. Studied his own dreams. Recording the ones that he dreamed most in a dream diary. Van Eden created names for seven, how many? Seven different types of dreams he experienced based on the data he collected. One through seven. Number one, initial dreams. Number two, pathological dreams. Number three, ordinary dreams. Four, vivid dreams. Five, demonical dreams. Six, general dream sensations. Seven, lucid dreams now he said the seventh type lucid dreaming is the most interesting and worthy of the most careful observation and study so let's observe this let's study this and let's reason together here we 
we go. Many people call themselves God and are not being a God in all of their realities. Here's a deep question for you. Question number one. Are you more of a creator God when you are awake or when you are sleepy? Or when you're asleep? Take your time before answering. Are you more of a creator God when you are awake, when you're sleepy, or when you're asleep? You are a God in your dream world. You know, I gotta only get four hours of sleep a night, or only get this. You are a God in your dream world. And we're not even talking about the awakened hours of your so-called daydreams and your so-called dream life. Yet. Say it again. You're a God in your dream world. And we are not even talking about the awakened hours of your so-called daydreams in your so-called dream life. Yet. Yet. Have you ever gotten an argument and you stood your ground? And I'm going to say it again. This could be your boss. This could be, I don't care who it is. This could be like, they just really trying to like get at you. And have you ever stood your ground? Watch this, watch this. In your dreams, and you woke up, and you was like, it was a dream, but you was like. <laughs> I was a dream, but I really feel good. Like, don't you ever talk to me like, you really are like, because it happened. It just happened in your dream world. It didn't happen in your real world, but you're remembering it just like you remember what happened in your real world. And basically, we're nothing but memories anyway, so why don't you ball out in your dreams? So why did you wake up feeling so good about yourself? Because what you did in your dream or sleep time felt so real even upon awakening. The power of awareness and comprehension will instantly change your sleep life. Your sleep life is guaranteed. Your sleep life is guaranteed. But remember, a dream life is not guaranteed. But a sleep life is. When it comes to living, operating, and progressing in your sleep life, we must know how to, uh, we must know basically how low 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 of a control low of a control low of a control level that we're on what do you mean we got a low control level in our sleep life how many arguments or debates have we got into about our dream life mm. when we're asleep not the dream life when you're awake the dream life your dream life when you're asleep I fly in my dreams, but we must know how low of a control level that we're on. We have the ability to live in many realities, and here's just three. So again, I'm only giving three, because everybody want to argue. Well, I know about the, the dimension of, I put three, the physical reality, the spiritual or energy reality, and then, then the dream reality. How do you know which reality you're in? If they're all happening in mind, how do you know which reality you're in? Because your waking life can feel so good. Think about, think about winning the lottery or thinking about meeting the love of your life and walking into the date together on the first that first second like whatever that feels like or having a baby or hitting the last second shot whatever like feels like a dream like that day went fast because it's all happening in your mind anyway so how do you know which reality you're in if the waking reality feels like a dream too reality checks <laughs> and this goes for so many topics and paths 
but out of the many reality checks, the one that I like is the nose breathing reality check. <clears throat> so right now, if you close your nose and try to breathe, you can't do it. And even if you say, I'm lucid dreaming right now, and then you hold your nose and breathe in, <clears throat> you're going to be like, I'm awake. That's stupid. Like, who does that? There's a science to that. This is where you hold your nose and try to breathe through it. Now, again, before doing it, ask yourself, am I lucid dreaming? So I'm asking myself right now, am I lucid dreaming? Okay, I asked myself a question. Watch this. Try to fly. Oh, I can't fly. I'm probably awake. This is so stupid, Jason. When trying to manifest your first or your next lucid dream, this is not stupid. This is stupid if you're just living. You know, don't do this and go to the barbershop and be like, hey, man, when I was trying to hold my nose, yeah, you're really stupid. But when trying to manifest your first or next lucid dream, oh, you're a scientist. So... Do this 20 times throughout your waking hours, which gives you or gives this reality a space in your mind or your memory. So when you are asleep or when you're sleeping, you have an easier time of remembering to get your uh, 20 reality checks in. And once you're able to have a successful outcome, become even more of a scientist with your results. So again, this is only if you're trying to lose a dream. This is not for talking at the barbershop and feeling like you have something to say to people that's deep. They're going to call the cops on you. I'm going to call the cops on you because you're crazy if you're using it like that. So since I'm laughing right now and I put this in my notes, I have three funny lucid dreaming questions slash statements that it's not that funny, but it is funny. But it'll give you a deeper understanding of what I'm talking about. So you can even use comedy to help people understand stuff. So, number one. This is a super deep, funny, philosophical, lucid dreaming question. Can, can you purposely go to sleep in a lucid dream to get double the sleep? And if anybody knows about lucid dreaming, that's funny. So that's considered funny. So that's scientifically funny. And stupid people don't shame me and be like, man, I don't get it. So that's not funny. Who cares? I probably wasn't in your science class. Um, number two, another funny talking point. So this lady says she controls her crush to have a crush on her in her lucid dreaming. And I was like, now that's deep. That's funny and deep and weird at the same time to me. So I asked her if she had control issues in real life, and she said, yeah. So, but again, she's going to be asleep for eight hours. You're just going to sit in your boat and let the ocean take you. That's what you do. That's what we do to dreams. You don't want to sleep. What you do in your dream? What do you mean? I just went to sleep because I had to go to work and. You have no control over your dream life. But you want to live your dreams. And you be daydreaming. In the face. So here we go. Last but not least. This was funny too. <laughs> uh, remember back in the day when someone tried to hit on you. And they're not interested in you. And they're like yeah right in your dreams. This guy said, he get he says, now, okay, I see you around 3 o'clock um, in the morning. So I thought that was funny. Now, again, these are science jokes. One way I feel like I can slip out of that is, if you don't get it, let me see your uh, science report cards. Because I'm not going to have a low self-esteem on those jokes if your science grades ain't that good. So let's move forward. A lot of us are depressed, but a lot of us are sleepy. A lot of us are depressed and a lot of us are sleepy. So why is sleep so important? <clears throat> Normal sleep is a restorative state. However, when sleep is disrupted or is inadequate, I only got three hours of sleep. Like we brag, man, I only had two hours of sleep. Man, I only had 
However, when sleep is disrupted or inadequate, it can lead to increased tension and irritability. Physical or emotional trauma, metabolic or uh, medical problems can trigger sleep disturbances. Now, here we go. Poor sleep can lead to fatigue. So you got the fatigue. With fatigue, you ain't exercising, so you exercise less. And you do it in fatigue. That's going to lead to a decline in your fitness level. Eventually, you will find yourself in a vicious cycle of inactivity and disturbed sleep, which causes both physical and mood-related symptoms. I thought I was going to give a diagnosis. I was ready to argue. What's it going to cause? What's it going to cause? I'm about to use my doctor's degree. No. Nope. It causes physical and mood-related symptoms. Well, what are they? You go look them up. I'm not going to do the work. I'm not going to do all the work for you. How much sleep do you recommend? Now, these are bars. There's bars all up in here. It's like number bars. So if y'all in the numbers, y'all going to love this. There are no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts to this sleep thing. I highly recommend seven to nine hours. Seven to nine hours? I'm being nice with seven. It's really eight to nine. So... This also gives you seven to nine or eight to nine hours of possible lucid dreaming experience time. There you go with that lucid dreaming stuff. When we go to sleep, does our brains hire cleaning companies to clean out our dirty minds? I'm going to say this again. When we go to sleep, does our brains hire cleaning companies? Cleaning companies. To clean out our dirty minds? Here's an analogy because I want to bring more understanding to this. The cleaning companies with the big contracts from our brains. Now our brains is giving out the contracts. So the cleaning companies with the big contracts from our brains, they arrive to work. So we got the maids arriving for work. We got the janitors of the brain arriving for work. They all receive cleaning contracts from our brains to clean out the toxins from our day. To clean out the toxins from our day. Once they get the, to the toxins scraped up and swept out, they flush it. Where do they flush it? They flush it down the cerebral spinal fluid. How does it move? It moves like wave patterns. Hold on. So our brains, when it's flushing, when it's flushing down the toxins of our day, down our cerebral spinal fluids, it moves in wave patterns. So our brains are copying off of the movement of the universe, wave pattern of particles. We don't have time to go uh, there this morning, but that's... I'm really interested in that topic, but let's go back to the, um, the topic at hand. So let's say we live in a reality where we're allowed, where we allowed outside factors to interfere with seven to nine hours of the cleaning contracts. Um, the results of this terrible choice would leave little traces. Now check this out. I'm going back to an analogy to make sense of what we're doing by not sleeping and laughing at sleep. <laughs> this terrible choice will leave little traces of dirt left behind in our brains. What does this dirt do? So we're going to connect this metaphor back to a reality science. So this dirt being left behind are really toxic. That's what they are. They're toxins. And if these toxins are not properly cleaned, so remember the cleaning company, so back to a reality science, if your brain is not cleaning them out through sleep, they will stay around. The toxins will stay around and build up and combine with one another, with one another and they will gradually become hard and refuse to move. Now, is this why so many sleepy people are hard-headed most of the time? But we're going to move on. We're going to move on. Studies of Alzheimer's patient brains shows how hard 
toxin clusters built up. Studies of Alzheimer's patients' brains show these hard toxin clusters built up. So no, so not getting enough sleep increases your risk of getting Alzheimer's. Let's view the brain cycles to give more understanding. Sleep cycle gain. Each sleep cycle lasts about 90 minutes. We need five cycles. Each sleep cycle lasts about 90 minutes. We need five cycles. Our brain cycles through stages from wakefulness, we're awake, we're awake right now. I'm awake, I'm awake. To stage one of deep sleep. Let me tell you how deep, how deep, ooh. Let me tell you how deep, deep sleep is. Here, so again, you're just, you went from wakefulness to deep sleep. You're not even at the realm sleep yet. You're still at deep sleep. Here, our heart rate slows down. Our blood pressure drops. Watch this. Watch how good sleep is to our body. <laughs> we produce a human growth hormone that repairs our bones and our tissues so we don't wake up with aches and pains. This is really great when you've had a hard day of work. I don't care what field of work you in. Now, what does this do for our immune system? Deep sleep gives our immune system a boost, and this is supposed to knock out the colds, the sniffles, the sore throats, and the coughs, because this deep sleep we're experiencing. Deep sleep also helps with new learning. So deep sleep can equal deeper learning. And, and, and being able to comprehend deeper concepts, universal realities, and individual realities in a timelier manner. Here we go. So, okay, Jason, that, that's good for the body. What's going on with my mind? So now that your body has been repairing, I'm not going to call it repaired because we have a lot of reversal to do. So we're just gonna say now that your body has been repairing in your sleep, now it's time to repair your mind. Before, watch this, before you even awaken for your day. After deep sleep, it's time for realm sleep, which is rapid eye movement, or rapid eye movement sleep where most of our dreams take place. Where? Where most of our dreams take place. What? Where most of our dreams take place. When we dream is when we experience our mental recovery process. I'm gonna say this again. <laughs> I haven't dreamed in a long time. When we dream is when we experience our mental recovery process. Man, I don't know, what you dream? I just, I need to get sleep. When we dream is when we experience our mental recovery process. Haters want to talk. Come on, haters. What y'all got to say? Well, I thought we only get a mental recovery process from religion or therapy. Let me tell you something. If you slept better, you probably would be driving your religious institutions or therapists insane. The term mental health is thrown around all willy-nilly. It's all willy-nilly. Whatever willy-nilly means with throwing mental health around. But mental health recovery, recovery from putting yourself into the position to dream seems like a great prerequisite for any effective mental health journey. So again, I'm not talking about dreaming and mental health. According to science, they might be on one. So, when we first go to sleep, our deep sleep dominates. Remember, this is where you get that physical body repair. As we get closer to awakening, our dreams transfer to realm sleep. So, it's like your God therapist <laughs> preparing you for your so-called new day. So the people who are still sleeping right now, they're getting therapy because they're 
mentally recovering if they can make it through a certain amount of hours of sleep. I recommend eight to nine. If you have to do it, and you know, I need another hour or seven. But again, it's people of years and years and years of only four hours of sleep, three hours of sleep. So it's going to be a process. But at the end of the day, it's like your God therapist preparing you for your so-called new day. So imagine cutting your sleep short and missing this iconic process of human science. For every one hour, now these are numerical bars. For every one hour that you are awake, you need two hours of sleep. What? For every one hour that you are awake, you need two hours of sleep. I always divide by two, baby. Why did you say baby? Because I want you to remember this one. So I'm saying baby like this to help you remember, baby. So being awake around 16 hours is the so-called fatigue zone. I want you to remember this, okay? Here we go. Being awake for around 16 hours is our so-called fatigue zone. I've been up for uh, 19 hours. I didn't say you still can be awake. I said fatigue zone. Y'all know that song, Don't Push Me Because I'm Close to the Edge? Well, the edge is the zone of maybe falling off the cliff. Congratulations, you're in a fatigue zone. That means you're not operating at your best. But I'm still operating, you're not. Okay. If somebody you loved had uh, was getting surgery, would you want the surgeon to be operating at his or her fatigue zone? You say no quick. You say no quick to that. So, <laughs> let's just say that science, logic, and universal reasoning is what humans only used. Then all humans would know that it's time to go to bed at 16 hours. Let's do the math. 16 hours divided by 2, baby, is 8 hours, baby. And 16 plus 8 is 24 hours in a day, baby. <laughs> Minimum 7 hours of sleep, okay? But again, imagine living in a life or living a life that attacks your sleep. This can be a so-called good life. My life is good. That's why I can't sleep. Congratulations, your good life is ruining your sleep process. My life is horrible. That's why I can't sleep. I got some funny bars to that one, but I'm going to wait. But remember, imagine living a life that attacks your sleep. This could be a good life or a bad life. Anything under seven hours is interrupting a beautiful process that allows you to live better. Jason, I'm not listening to none of this until I get some science. Okay, we got some for you too. The Center for Sleep Research discovered that if, you, if you're awakened for more than 17 hours, it's equivalent to having a blood alcohol content level of 0 0.05. Jason, can you say that less sarcastically and say it for real so I can... Yeah, okay. The Center for Sleep Research... So I didn't say this. The Center for Sleep Research said this. Discovered. Now they said they discovered this. That being awake for more than 17 hours is the equivalent. That's equal for the people who didn't deal with math that much. It's the equivalent of having a blood alcohol content level of 0.05. If we have a blood alcohol content level of 0 0.05, we are over the legal level for driving. So how many people do you know that drink wine or alcohol and stay up a lot? How many people do you know that drink wine and alcohol and stay up a lot? Next time you ride with them... <laughs> Ask them how long they've been up. If it's been over 17 hours, then they are guilty of a science DUI. Of not enough sleep. Before any legal DUI, 
reality can ever occur from the wine or alcohol that they plan on consuming after work or after personal obligations. Science DUIs. Do you know how many important life decisions are being made under these mental circumstances? Jason, let's talk about money. All I care about is money. I don't care about, okay. Is financial debt a byproduct of sleep debt? Sleep debt is the sleep we owe ourselves. Micro sleep is when a brain puts you to sleep. Why? Because that's where sleep deprived. That's where, that's because you were sleep deprived, which means your body has your back. Even when you don't, your body says, okay, Jason is being silly. Uh, let me make him sick and da, 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 and just lay down. Or, or does your body say, get up, make money, get up, solve problems? Get, no, <laughs> but sleep can make you lay down and your body can make you lay down. Because you're doing too much. Disrespecting sleep or sleep deprived. You don't want to be water deprived or food deprived. But sleep deprived? Please. You can choose to starve yourself. Again, you can choose to dehydrate yourself. But you can't beat sleep life. Can't beat your sleep life. It will eventually put you to sleep. It doesn't care where you are. Uh, so work with your brain instead of working against it. Sometimes you only, <laughs> this is back when I was talking about the bad life. <laughs> Sometimes you only have to sleep your way out of your problems. Pause. Shout out to Dame Dash. Make sure you stay in context there. So here's some do's and don'ts that creates and decreases peak performance. That's what we want. And here go some bars. Here go some bars here. A TED speaker named Karen Lively said, sleep is an elixir. It's an elixir for good living. We need good sleep hygiene. And somebody asked, what is that? It's just a sleep routine. 30 minutes before you plan to go to sleep, create a transition strategy. To your custom relaxation and create wind down goals. This is how I want to wind down. No, I crash. I lay on my computer and I'll be spitting on my computer and I crash. Create a transition strategy to your custom relaxation and create wind down goals. When I say relaxation, here are some do's and don'ts. The do's. Read. Listen to music. Maybe, maybe, I didn't say do this, maybe watch a safe form of television that doesn't influence binge watching. You are setting yourself up. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm having some flashbacks. Somebody recommended some stuff, man. Five hours later. Create a dark and cool bedroom. Put a bowl of water somewhere in your room to help rehydrate the atmosphere. It could make a huge difference in the quality of your sleep. Keeping, root, keeping your routine the same because your brain loves routine. Okay? Your brain loves routine. The don'ts. Social media. TV night binge watching. So the opposite of watching a safe form of television that doesn't encourage it binge watching turning the dehydrating air condition on high switching up your bedtime multiple times which your brain doesn't like because your brain loves routine so some brief sleep sciences now this is super deep karen lively also said we have two hormones in our system one is ghrelin and the other one is leptin ghrelin leptin ghrelin tells us when we're hungry so remember ghrelin you're hungry sounds like you grilling <laughs> ghrelin i'm hungry i'm hungry ghrelin leptin 
tells you when you're full. Leptin full. So for me to remember this, I would say like Lipton iced tea. So I'm grilling because I'm hungry. And Lipton, I mean I'm drinking because I'm full. So don't ask me why I said it like that. That just helps me remember that. So she said, uh, according to Dr. Van Quarter, the scorter, they said they discovered that uh, when you're asleep, when you're sleep deprived. Check this out. I don't know why I can't stay in shape. I don't know why I just, I don't know why I even eat like this and I just don't. They discover when you are sleep deprived, your ghrelin increases. Remember ghrelin? You're grilling because you're hungry. That's the I'm hungry hormone. And guess what your leptin is doing? It's decreasing. That's the I'm full hormone. So imagine being hungry hormone and you're you're full like you've had enough imagine that hormone be like <laughs> it diet <laughs> imagine nothing in your body said hey hey you had hey that's enough who chews like that who drinks that much nothing in your body is saying that to you so all your body is saying go go you hungry you hungry you hungry you're hungry or 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 grilling 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 and there's no leptin, leptin, leptin. So that begins the path to unhealthy living. So artificial food, y'all know that's going down. And artificial intelligence, you know that's going down, has a dark side. But what's the dark side of artificial light? Well, number one, we spend a third of our lives asleep. Number two. Sleeping in dark, cool rooms for us, but thanks to men, watch this, sleeping in dark, cool rooms is good for us, but but thanks to men like Thomas a Alva Edison, a high percentage of Americans live in environments that meet the general standards of light pollution. This dude said light pollution. Like, we're not supposed to have light. Edison thought sleep was lazy. Now remember, this is Thomas Edison saying this. This is funny. Edison thought sleep was lazy, unhealthy, inefficient, even though you can find pictures of him napping, and he took several naps a day. Despite his and this hypocrisy, his work more and sleep less view changed America big time. Some say how, how sway. I say... Well, they illuminated the nighttime. Light time and nighttime. Night, light time and nighttime became a sign of economic progress. Light time and nighttime. We get money. We get money. We show Mother Nature that we no longer are at the mercy of her clock. Or so we thought. Artificial light could have serious effects on our sleep cycles. When we are exposed to light at night, our brains don't know any better to think the sun is still shining. This could be very confusing to the body by preventing the release of melatonin. Depression, heart disease, diabetes, and cancer have all been leaked to overexposure to artificial light. I'm scrolling. Sleep deprived people do worse when learning new tasks and they are less able to process new information. Versus just getting a good night's nice sleep appears to make us more creative. Hmm. So just getting a good night's nice rest appears to make us more creative versus sleep deprived people doing worse when learning new tasks. And they are less able to process new information. So when we come up with new solutions to new problems that we never thought of or seen before when we get enough sleep. I'll say this again. We will come up with new solutions to these new problems that we never thought of that. I never saw it like that before. Peace out. I'm going to close it here. I'm going to get some sleep.
uh, thank you for joining me for another Sunday bars. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And email me, inbox me if you want to go deeper on this topic. This was fun. Get some sleep. Peace and love.